Hey, what's going on, movie lovers? I'm Jeff. I'm Kyle. And we are Shut Up, I Like This, podcast where we talk about how much we like film, and we don't hate movies. We actually, we enjoy talking about stuff that we like. We were just talking before we started recording about how you and I can make, like, C-grade horror movies for the rest <laughs> yes, of our lives. For sure. And be like, I'd be okay with that. Yeah, so would I. Like, just to do something that you like and be yeah, creative. Totally. And... I don't care. Yeah, I don't need to be a superstar. IM- IMDb is like 3.3 out of 10. Yeah, I don't care. Whatever, shit. I can live off that shit. <laughs> yeah, it'd be cool just to make a low-grade yeah. film like that. Yeah. That, that's just to a, hang out on set like that? That's us. We're more realistic. Like, I don't need to be the next Tarantino. Right. Or yeah, 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 yeah. Like, eh, whatever. Like, but I'm sure that's like stuff like last week when we did Doomsday. That's like what Neil Marshall said. Yeah, I'll just start out doing brain death or whatever. And then yeah. I'll, I'll do Descent. And now he's big. Mm-hmm. He's in Game of Thrones and everything some, huge. Some big movie that he was doing that I don't Hellboy. Remember. Hellboy. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's what would happen to us. We'd be like, oh, yeah, we'll start out small, but <laughs> we're just so good, Kyle. Maybe. So episode 61, um, before we get into talking about John Carpenter's The Ward, uh, of course, I uh, want to mention GearBest. Uh, go to GearBest.com. Use the link below. Start your own podcast. If you need an upgrade mic, if you need some new headphones, anything you need is on there. All electronic based. Check out Gearbe- GearBest.com. It helps us out. helps you out yearbest.com yeah yeah and also um check out the indie gamer magazine i'm gonna put up a little link you right should. here for that it's on the shirt uh yep wearing my shirt today uh the indie gamer magazine um almost into uh issue number seven already awesome. so it's been flying so check out uh indie gamer magazine as well you know what i like about indie gamer magazine games i haven't heard of yes <laughs> there's more stuff out there other than call of duty and Fortnite. exactly yeah 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 it, it's and a, it's uh, amazing lots of great interviews uh developers from around the world yeah um there's a lot of cool stuff out there that you never hear about because i follow uh, you guys on facebook and it's cool because it's like you share a developer and that developer will have like 500 people that are yeah on their facebook yeah, yeah, page yeah. and that's it and i think that that's cool yeah that it's you super can shine cool. a spotlight on it's, all, all creators and not yeah. just the the top one person yeah it's no it's been a ton of fun i'm really yep. happy that i get to do it um hopefully it keeps on going mm-hmm. um like to like to get up there a little bit bigger so check that out um so let's get into it uh episode number 61 uh Ooh. time is flying I know. um i was just teasing the other day we should go back do a little commentary on our first uh i don't want to do it i don't want to listen <laughs> it's I bet it'd be a lot different. Like, uh, terrible. Oh, I'm sure. Especially me, because you, you've been podcasting for a while. Yeah. Um, it'd be a little bit different for me, because <laughs> it was bad. You think I stuttered bad now. Like, whew, it was bad back then. We always joke on the Purple People podcast, we're like, because we've got like 334 episodes, is I think what we just recorded. And we're like, you can go back and listen to a lot of content, but you probably shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> And, I mean, with current events and stuff, it's, I mean, why would you, right? I, I, Not to for, dog No, 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 I totally really, get but, it. Like, it's a weekly show for a reason, because we we try to be very current with, right. you know, Vikings news. And after you're out of that one or two week span, mm-hmm. I was just talking. we missed field goals and missing the playoffs. <laughs> I was just talking to you, but I think next season I'm going to do a little show down here. Uh, with Seattle Seahawks yeah. um, cuz this year was so awesome uh, from th- sorry this is the way off track uh, but we'll, we'll get started we on assume, the word in a second assume people right like right right bodies. right um, but th- this season was so much fun experts saying we'll go 4 and 12 yeah. and then we end up making the playoffs have the number one rushing attack so it would have been a fun year to do what you guys are doing um, so maybe next year you think that the best episodes are always when you're pissed off <laughs> I'm serious. Okay. That's when you get the most people in the live chat and the most people talking. Like, you win a game, no one cares. Oh, yeah, we won. Right. We're good. You lose a game, and we just get flooded with people. Who well, I mean, that uh, that relates to us talking about movies, movies that we love. Um, you know, sometimes yeah, little, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, like that movie. Sometimes it's a little tougher to talk about the shit that you like. Yeah. Yeah. We were just talking I, about I think that last week. That's why we're in the rarity yeah, with this podcast. Definitely. Yep. Um, so let's get into it. John Carpenter's The War 2011. Mm-hmm. Um, a critic score of 33% and an audience score of 26. Yeah. So it definitely needs to be talked about because not the right people are talking about it or not enough people are talking about it. John Carpenter. This John the, Carpenter. This is the last full-length film that he's directed. 
Do you think he'll do another one before the time passes? I, I don't think so. Uh, he's been releasing music and doing live concerts where he performs. Really? Yeah, you didn't know that? No. This is really cool. So he's got, I think, two, two or three CDs out. Uh, of live music and shit? Uh, or like he, he of, of like studio recordings that he does, and then he will go around and he'll play it live what? on special shows and stuff too. Um, he's directed a couple like music videos for him, and they're like instrumental scores if you like. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, don't expect. Right. He's not up there. He's not Rob Zombie. He's not doing pop music or yeah. whatever like that. But it's really cool. He calls them like the lost themes. Oh, I and like that. And it sounds like. Oh, this would have been on Escape from Escape New York, from New York, or something like that. Is that what it is? It's just stuff like kind of maybe he didn't use and he brings back up. Um, and... I'm not a hundred percent sure. That'd I'd be really. Cool. I think a lot of it is just him sitting down and playing. <laughs> recently, that's uh, awesome. So he does that, and there's some videos you can see of him performing it, and he's just as happy as can be really? doing that. So I think he's kind of found his little yeah, because he's his getting little, up there. his little place that he's happy at here. At the See, end. in his eighties. I'm not sure how old he is, but he's got to be getting up there. He's got to be close. He's one of the last kind of pioneers of horror. Yeah. That we got left. I mean, I can't, off the top of my head, think of... You know, George Romero's gone. Yeah. Wes Craven and uh, John Carpenter. Those were kind of the big, yeah. the big three. Yeah, he's... Sean Cunningham from Friday the 13th. You know, he's still with us. Yeah. That's weird that his name gets... Like kind of forgotten about. Yeah. Because a lot of the, a lot of those films were directed by so many different. Yeah, that's true. People. That's true. And then the legal dispute, lately doesn't help. Yeah, there was. What were you talking about the other day? Uh, where? Oh, you were talking about God of War. Oh yeah. That was an interesting topic that I did not know about. I yeah, did not that know was... that he he wasn't even credited as like the creator or anything. Yeah, like, I always thought that that's weird, like, in the game industry, that they don't... Have to... Like, David Jaffe created God of War. That was his thing mm -hmm. on the PlayStation 2. And then when you get to, like, the new one on the PS4, they don't really... Like, if they do, it's, like, way back in the credits. And, you know, like, hmm. on a movie, they always make sure that in, like, the opening credits or whatever... Batman, character created by Bob Kane, and now Bob Bill Kane Finger. Bill Finger. Yeah, yeah, and, like, they don't... The game industry doesn't... Really yeah, do that's that. interesting. It's like you that's create true. it and then you sign the rights over to Sony and then they do whatever the fuck they want with it. Yeah. Next. He didn't even know that it was ported on the platform. Yeah, that that's crazy. Yeah. Could you imagine something you worked on? Yeah. Not knowing like what, what happens what to they it? do with it? That's crazy. Yeah. So yeah. John Carpenter's the ward. <laughs> um, yeah. So this like, is actually one of my picks for yeah. one of my alternative picks for Halloween. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. Do, that would, but... yeah, yeah, that would have fit in. Um, so before I get into like the cast, uh, we'll talk. I'm sure we'll talk <laughs> a little bit more about uh, John Carpenter. Um, this was your pick. This is something that you had uh, seen before. This yep. is my first experience. But why don't you go first? Um, tell them about your kind of your first experience and what this film means. Well, it had been. Uh... A while, and I'm a big John Carpenter fan. It had been yeah. a while since he had done anything. His movie right before this one was what, Ghosts of Mars? And that, that was. Ice Cube? Yeah, and that was what, 2001 or so? Like around that time frame? And there was a big layoff. There was a whole. Sorry to no, cut in, I, but that early 2000 area, there was a whole bunch of those like Mars space films, like Re Red Planet and. I know. Attack of the Killer Clowns from Outer Space. <laughs> I know what you mean. There was like a, yeah, lot, of, a lot of weird like Mars-based shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of a sudden, I don't know. Ghost of Mars was the yeah, one. Ghost of Mars, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. The, that's Carpenter's one. I, th I think so. Uh, yeah, so there's any, a whole bunch. Anyway, of them. it had been a, a while since he had done anything. It had ten years. Yeah, ten, ten a decade or so span, and. Uh, I remember reading about this online and seeing the photos and thinking, it's just cool that he's doing something. Mm -hmm. Even if it's not like a big budget project. Especially you think he's starting, yeah. I mean, what, 70, 69? Late 60s, early yeah, 70s? Was Halloween 1, 60. Was it 70? I think it might have been 70. I'm terrible with dates. I don't know. It's, it's around there. Or, so, or was it 78? Are we way wrong? Oh, we're fucking way. Yeah, yeah 78. Right. 71. Not, I think in early 60s. I don't know. I was thinking 68, 
But no, it's seven. We're thinking Psycho. Okay, there you go. That was nice. sure. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's what we meant. <laughs> <laughs> totally. No, we or, weren't just wrong. Or ninety-eight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no shit. I would kind of like to do that. That would be an interesting. Just go the ninety all, all the films from ninety seven that we've done. No, the ninety eight remake of Psycho. Oh, the shot for shot. Vince Vaughn. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Ah. I don't, I, I don't know. You, so you were talking about he hadn't done anything for a while and. And I just thought it was cool, and I remember seeing all the photos and thinking that oh, that looks like a neat movie, even if it's kind of a lower budget film. It's just neat that he's still working and doing mm-hmm. stuff, and then it just came and went, and there was like nothing. I had never like, heard I of don't, it. Yeah, you'd never heard of it. No one. It was just here one day, and it's a headline on Bloody Disgusting, and then it's gone. Huh. And that's so weird for me that a director, as especially big with his as name John on Carpenter, it, yeah, Halloween, The Fog. Escape from New York. The Thing. The Thing. All these films, these big franchises. And this is the last thing that he's done. I mean, he still could yeah. do another one. But hey, sorry, cool. this is the last film. That's, Christine. that's weird to think about. That's weird, oh, Christine, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, I love Christine. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that is weird to think about. I I, I don't know. I think he's still... I'm, I don't know. It'd be cool to see him do something else before the time comes. Um... But, I mean, if this was his last film, I think that it would take on a new meaning. So, I had always, before I forget, uh, who was the Mad Max director? George Miller. Uh, if you're, George Miller. Yeah, he didn't do anything for a long time, too. Yep. And then all of a sudden, some crazy studio executive was like, give George Miller just a fuckload of money, and yeah. we got Fury Road. Yeah. While John Carpenter is still alive, someone <laughs> needs to be like, hey, John, just have a budget of a Marvel film. <laughs> I don't care what you do with it. Yeah. Go play. Be interesting. Yeah. I mean, ha- George Miller had Happy Feet. <laughs> well, totally. And that's a big no, I know. For him I know. Too, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but there was probably about a decade was in between there, too. Way off on yeah. Because Fury Road was 15, and I think Happy Feet was like 06. Yeah. So there's but you know, about the same about a decade. Yeah. But, I don't know how much direction goes into animated. Do you? Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I have no idea. I, I don't know. It can't be the same as a live action film. I'm afraid to say anything because some animator's gonna. Some animator's gonna be yeah. pissed off. Fuck you guys! It's just this hard. Actually, I would say the animators will be happy because they're doing the bulk of the work. On an animated film. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're not going to be working on a live action film. Yeah, exactly. It's... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so, w- did you see this in 2011? Like, what was well, your first experience? I bought this ex- immediately when it came out. Really? Um, yeah. Huh. 2011, you bought this on Blu ray. Yeah. Do you remember where you bought it at? Like, what a- place had this? Amazon. Oh, okay. Because there's nowhere. Right, right, right. Yeah, I was going to say, like, did they have this at, like, Walmart or I something? I mean, for, maybe, but for us in the Midwest, we, oh, right, we, yeah. we never get shit like that. Yeah, exactly. Just Amazon, you know, delivered to the door. Mm-hmm. Right on. Yeah. Yeah, this was, the, I had never heard of it, so this was my first experience. Uh, you mentioned it a couple episodes ago, and we added it because I knew you wanted to do it. Um, I mean, I'm all for seeing Amber new film. Heard. I'm all for her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'm all for watching new films and stuff that I haven't even heard of and John Carpenter, so of course I wanted to see it. Mm-hmm. And I watched it today, and I was uh, pleasantly surprised. Yeah. It wasn't... Going into it, it's not what I expected. You don't know what to think. Yeah. Yeah. But yep. then coming out, I was like, all right, that, that was... I got a lot of uh, Shutter Island vibes from it. Okay. Um, I was expecting like a ghost film, like The Grudge or The Ring. Or yeah, something. something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it ended up being more of kind of a psychological thriller, really. It was. Yep. And so I think that kind of threw me for a loop. But once I got over that, it's it's a good movie. I liked it. So I, it's definitely one that I'll go back and watch again. Like I, I watched The Ugly again. Yeah, and you um, like it more. Yeah, the second that, like, time that was through. super interesting yep. to rewatch. So I, I definitely want to go back and rewatch this now. But it, it was, uh, yeah, w- once I got over that, it, I feel like it, was, we should, it was a little different. I feel like we should, uh, spoiler warning right now, 
Yeah, okay. There's a big twist at the end. Look at this big, huge graphic that's stupid. Yeah, that we won't actually do. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, you won't do, graphics guy. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, it's stupid. Uh, we should spoiler warning this, though, for people listening. There's a really good twist at the end of the movie, and if right. you haven't seen it and you want to check it out and you don't want the ending spoiled, yeah. which is kind of the fun in the film, maybe time out and watch it and then come back. Yeah. If you don't give a shit, you can listen to the rest of the show because yeah. we have to talk about the big yeah. spoiler of course. at the end of the movie for the movie to have a discussion and for it to make, to make any, any kind, kind of, sense. of sense yeah yeah so that's your little fair warning if there you go if you don't want the saw twist at the end of it uh, yeah to be ruined for you let's uh let me run through the cast real quick because this cast i really like um so of course uh john carpenter director yep. writers michael and sean rasmussen um we kind of looked through their stuff real fast <laughs> sorry it was mostly, uh, like we were talking about at the beginning, kind of small, like, B.C. horror films yeah. that you'll never hear of. One was, like, Dark Feed. Um, I don't remember the other ones. Yeah, I don't remember either. But, Maybe they're um, good. You don't know. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, we've never seen them, never heard of them, but who knows. Yep. But, I mean, they wrote this with John, I mean, John Carpenter. Ah, I want to jump around so much. How did they find him? Do you know? Did he find that? Do you have anything on trivia about that? I like how they got matched up together. Yeah, like how did? Yeah, I don't. How, did, how, how does? Cause how did the writers usually when get? Usually, I think of John Carpenter, it's a writer director. Nope. And I don't no. think of him so much as doing other people. Okay, well, I kind of have something on trivia about okay. that, but not not too much about like how they actually got connected. We'll save that for. Yeah. For later. Yep, yep, yep. Um, and then running through the cast, really, I only wrote down two. Yeah. Um, a, a small cast. Girl from the Flash. Daniel Panabaker, yeah. uh, The Flash, Time Lapse is a small indie film that I'd like to talk about. It was on Netflix for a while. I think I've seen Time Lapse. Um, it's about a camera that takes pictures of the future. And, oh, cool. Uh, That's kind of like our setup. Right. <laughs> yeah, a, little, a little bit. Um, she's also in Sky High. Um, <laughs> no shit? When I was a kid. She's I used, in Sky High? Yeah, she's the plant girl, Layla. Mm, it's been a spell since I've seen it. I guess I don't. I love. I used to have a crush on her when I was a kid. I've got it on DVD. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> I love Sky <laughs> we High. We should actually podcast about Sky. I would totally. Do I would Sky totally High. talk about Sky High. Bruce Campbell. Bruce Campbell is the coach yeah. or the gym teacher. Coach Boomer. Oh yeah. What they call yep, him. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good movie. Stephen Strait is kind of the badass bad guy, but not really. Kurt Russell. That's our tie back to John Carpenter. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Um, John Carpenter's Sky High. <laughs> Futuristic <laughs> Blade Runner shit. That'd be cool. Uh, so Sky High <laughs> is, uh, <laughs> is a great film. Um, and then she was in the reboot of, uh, we just mentioned it, Friday the 13th in 2009. No shit, she, she, she was. was uh, she? she was in the yeah. reboot of that. Um, she's been in quite a bit, but obviously now she's really blown up because of the flash. She's everywhere. And then She's great in yeah, she's yeah. good. She's she's a good yeah. little TV actress. She's not that she doesn't do fine in movies, but I definitely her niches, is, yeah, like definitely. The CW networks. Yeah, stuff. she fits in perfectly yeah. there. Yeah. Um, and then the star of the film, somebody I love, is Amber Heard. Um, obviously, right now she's huge as Maybe Mira. She just hit it big in Aquaman. Yeah. Yeah. So she's she's flying high right now. But uh, Machete Kills the uh, sequel. She's uh, Miss. What is she? Miss uh, Arkansas or something? Oh, I don't remember. Uh, Drive Angry. And then the first... I've never seen Drive Angry. Was that the Nicolas Cage Yeah, one? Nicolas Cage what? one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, it's Nick Cage. I mean, I like dumb Nicolas Cage. Yeah. Is it worth so, a, yeah, for sure. It, for it, sure. It, it like, falls in the he, worth a watch dumb yeah, Nicolas yeah, Cage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's he, all like, he comes back from hell to save his daughter and shit. Oh, yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, <laughs> it's fine. Um, but kind of the first thing I, I remember before I've mentioned it before is Never Back Down. Never back down. It was a stupid film. Not really though. Two thousand seven. It, like it was your huge. Top 10. <laughs> it was it was a big film for like high schoolers. Yeah. Um, it was just about MMA. It was like Karate Kid but updated. Yeah. And she was the girl. Oh, cool. So that was the first thing I remember her from. Um, so I was I was actually really psyched to see that she was in this. Yeah, because I remember when we were talking about it off camera when I brought it up and we pulled it up on your phone. The first thing you said was, "Oh, Amber Heard." Yeah, yeah. I I'll, love, I'll, I'll, yeah, I, I'll watch it. I like Amber yeah. Heard. Um, I always She's get her good. and uh, Blake Lively mixed yeah. up. They always confuse me. And the chick from Underworld. 
And yeah, <laughs> yeah. Rona Mitra and yeah. Kate Beckinsale as Amber Heard and Blake Lively. Yeah. No, it's cool that uh, she got this big break with uh, the Aquaman film. Because she's good. She deserves to be in in more movies. She's not just a pretty face. She's a really good actress. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Got, came a long way from Never Back Down. <laughs> Tell you that. Um, well, there was something else I was going to say. Uh, cast director, writer. Um, so, okay, so let's get into the, How do you want to do this? Do you kind of want to just get it? The ending out of the way we first. We have so to we talk can, about the ending so first. We can so we can the rest of the movie makes sense. Okay. So I'm still, after my first viewing, I'm still a little shaky. Okay. So here's my question to you. I'll see if I can. All right. I, I, she has uh, multiple personality disorder. Mm -hmm. right? So she has all these personas. So just her and Alice were the same person or all those girls were her? Every one of the girls that you see in this movie is another personality oh, okay. that she created. Right, right. Different personality traits. That's why one of them's a bitch. Uh, the, the girl from The Flash. Yep, which is weird because she's always so... I know, she's usually so good yeah. at it. Yeah, uh, so she's the bitch character. And then the one girl is the repressed seven-year-old because yeah. that is, you oh, know, her traumatic yeah, event yeah, yeah, yeah. was being locked up in that farmhouse that she burnt down at the beginning of the movie yep. so that's that personality coming out and then the other ones are I don't fucking know. loony yeah, I, yeah, I don't know <laughs> yeah. however, however you want to read into it uh, right so it's kind of like did you see the movie Split oh yeah of course yeah yeah, yeah. it's like that yeah and those are her different different personalities mm -hmm. that's interesting it's it's just a per and the it, whole the whole time I don't know if you picked up on this there's more people in the ward with her that you just don't see in the movie. She, yeah, right. So she only sees her other personalities. Yes, she doesn't she's see she's interacting, the other. but she's not actually interacting with anyone. Oh, okay. Yeah. So those are actual people. She's just personifying them as herself? Correct. Yep. Jesus Christ. All right. That adds another layer to it. Yeah. So I, I was watching it. Because there's a really quick shot where they show it of her just standing there, like, taking pills and stuff. And she's all, like, zoned out. And you see other people, what all's going on around oh, her. okay. And she's just, like, comatose, just, like, standing there or whatever. So this is basically all going on in her head. Okay, because that was the big thing. I realized that, like, they were her other personalities, but there's no, like, was she just not seeing everybody else? Or was she alone in the ward? I was like, no, where not, is everybody? She's not alone. She's just drugged up and whatever. I'm not paying attention to everybody else. The ghost was them saying that they had found a way to remove the personalities through medication or whatever else they were doing to her. And so that was her psyche manifesting as like a ghost that was killing off the personalities. Oh, <laughs> oh man. It's cool God, shit, isn't I'm it? I am dumb. Yeah. I, I completely missed that. They gloss over it pretty quick. Okay. It's in uh, Doctor Guy. Yeah. His office. Oh, I wanted to talk about him too. I yep. I, I was gonna write down his name. I forgot, but he's uh, he's in a lot of shit. But he's in like uh oh man, a Adam Sandler movie. Uh he, uh, 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 Adam Sandler goes to like New York and he uh he like inherits a bunch of money. Mr. Deeds. Mr. Deeds. Mr. That stupid Adam Sandler. Hey, that uh, the doctor guy is the news anchor that's trying to ruin him. No shit. Yeah, that that's a dumb connection, but yeah, he's in Mr. Deeds as the news anchor. That's cool. That sends uh, what's her face off to kind of try to get the story and ruin him. Yeah, there's a really quick line where the dude from Mr. Deeds <laughs> <laughs> uh, mentions that. Uh, yeah, through the through the therapy and through everything else, we're finding ways to slowly remove the oh. personalities from her, and that's where uh, what's her name in the movie? Kate. Kristen. 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 That's where she manifested as like a last resort Son to exp to explain where the the other people she was seeing are going, and she conjured up this whole story about a. About a haunted ghost coming after and killing Okay, him. that makes the movie so every, ten times every cooler. Time, every time someone dies in the movie, that, right? Why do? You, okay, here's a good one for you too. The girl named Iris mm -hmm. gets stabbed in the eye. Son of a bitch. What are the other ones? 
Uh, oh, I don't know. Oh, I guess the one that gets her throat slits so like Betty or something. Yeah, I don't know, but it worked in that case. Yeah, <laughs> that, yeah, that yeah. one. That's okay, because I I got the general, I like I understood yeah. that it was multiple personalities and like killing it off and stuff, but that hidden layer of like, that's their. There's like a psyche. Element. Yeah. And that's right at the end, like right over the top of it. And that's really pretty cool. Now, you know what I said when I messaged you and I was like, this was kind of a by the books, low budget, like ghost movie mm -hmm. until the end. And then the end, they kind of go over it pretty quick. They do. The end kind of like puts a, a whole different spin on it. And that's what yeah. makes me like the movie. Yeah. yeah. That's a lot in uh, Shutter Island. Uh, Mark Ruffalo takes Leonardo is actually an award himself. Yeah. But he has this illusion that he's a detective trying to solve something. Uh huh. And Mark Ruffalo goes along with it because I think if they, he gets to the end of it, he'll snap out of it. But really, he's just in like this continuous loop. Oops. And that that made me come back to this because like she's an award battling against herself yeah. essentially, and that's what Leonardo was doing in that movie. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So I, I drew some parallels there, but that added, yeah, they must have glossed over that quick because just that little extra of like, th that was their healing process of uh -huh. like trying to. Yeah. I do think they went over that too quick. Like if yeah. you happen to be preoccupied. I was probably writing something on a phone down. Or writing notes or yeah. you totally miss it because they totally. Are I just totally like, did. Yeah. Here, have this nugget. Boom. Hmm. Yeah. I completely missed that. All right. So. <laughs> Um, I, yeah, I was just looking, we, we were looking while we paused real quick, and, uh, the doctor in this film, um, he is, he's the fucking guy in Mr. Deeds, but he's in, like, he's Professor Moriarty in Sherlock Holmes, he's been in, like, a whole bunch of stuff, yeah. but the I, first thing in my mind goes is fucking Mr. The Deeds. That's so dumb, yeah. but I just, I wanted to give credit where credit's due, because he's, he's good. Um, yeah, now that you say that, and I'm looking at him on the back of the package, that is fucking... Yeah, you put the little chops uh, on him and stuff. Yep. Next on the news, Mr. Deeds. <laughs> so dumb. Okay, um, so coming off of the multiple personality disorder thing and how it's not actually a ghost, uh -huh. but it's another one for personalities, yep. the reason that it looks like that is because she was electrocuted and toasted and burned. Correct. Uh, which brings us to another cool little trivia point. I guess you call it a trivia point. Yeah. Uh, it might as well be, because everyone knows the KMB FX team. Uh, Greg Nicotero, of course, Walking Dead fans mm -hmm. and everything else. Every, everyone knows Every him. other horror film and, ever. Uh, Howard Berger did the special effects for the movie, which That's is crazy. really pretty cool. Especially for the, like uh, this. Like, something that people forget about. They just love doing special effects. Work. That's crazy. Like, I, you could come to it with pretty much anything, and I think they'll do it. And it also helps when you're John Carpenter. Well, yeah, I'm sure, for sure. But yeah, that was another thing because when I first put this in, I is this another supernatural horror film? Or like, what's are there ghosts? Yeah, you're not quite sure. And especially because it looks like every other ghost or spirit or whatever that you see in every other film the grudge the ring it, yeah it has that look but it's, it has that look because she was electrocuted yeah. to death and burned and shit so that makes so much more sense like i said a valid criticism of the film is it's a little generic ghost movie yeah at times well for the first hour yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah to be perfectly fair yeah and it, it's something i wanted to mention right off the bat too is um I, I think the thing, all the jump scares, everything, the thing that creeped me out the most was towards the beginning when she first gets into the ward and she's laying down to go to bed, something reaches up from under the bed, yeah. grabs her blanket and pulls up underneath. That's going to give me, that little yeah. part is going <laughs> to give me nightmares yep. for years. Yep. I Never mind the jump scares, never mind the... <laughs> Face out of nowhere. There were a couple really effective jump scares, though. Oh, for sure. I wrote. I wrote down one. Uh, was that the one where she opens the? What is it? She opens a little door. Uh, Which one? Whoa. I mean, there was like eight jump scares. So. Yeah. Which one did you write? Um, well, the very end. Um, the last scene 
where she's getting ready to leave. She's cured. She's good to go. She gets to go home. Mm -hmm. And she's like maybe br getting her toothbrush and stuff together. And she opens up the cabinet and it's Amber Heard. And oh, she yeah. jumps up to yeah. grab her. Yeah, that was a good one. Yep. That's what got me because I'm like, okay, movie's over. And then it's not <laughs> even like the burn demon, her alter It's Amber Heard jumping yeah. out of a fucking medicine cabinet at her. I thought that was a cool little effect and detail cool that it's twist. just, it's, it's her other... Amber Heard was one of her alter egos. But you follow Amber Heard throughout the whole film. Uh -huh. I, this like uh, this is why I like doing this. You, you, because, have, to talk, you have to talk through this. Yeah, stuff, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Like, that's cool. Yeah. So that was one that really got me. If you think about it, Amber Heard, her character in the movie, what was it? Chris? Kristen. Kristen doesn't really know that she's just a personality. No, she has no clue. She doesn't want to die. Mm -hmm. She doesn't want anything to happen to her. She's trying to take, like in the movie Split, she's trying to take over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Unknowingly. Yeah. Trying to take over. Yeah. It's, that's, inter that's a very cool part because we could have had this film from any one of their perspectives. And it would have been the same film, uh -huh. just a little bit different, but still good. Yeah. You could have put it in can, Daniel Pennebaker. I can see why he picked the script. Yeah. To work with. Yeah. I think it's, cool. it's an interesting it's script. A cool script. Yeah. Definitely. Um, but yeah, that, that pulling the blanket down out from underneath the bed. I'm not going to sleep right for a while. <laughs> it's always little shit like that. Oh, totally. Or like in Hellraiser, the nail. <laughs> it's always a little dumb shit. I don't like that shit. scene either. I don't like the blood in that scene. What is I, it? I don't like movie, the movie rubber blood. latex. Yeah, movie <laughs> blood usually looks so fake, but not in that. Yeah. Not in that scene. Mm. I hate that. Um, and then, um, okay, so moving on, I'll save that one for last. But I want to talk about okay. kind of the main nurse. When she gets there and he goes, I can be your best friend or I can be your... The guy nurse? Yeah. Okay. He's, and he's like, I can be the biggest dick or I can be your best bud. Like, you get to choose. Yeah. Fat Harlan Williams is how I'm describing <laughs> him. Um, I brought that up during the pause. Um, he reminded me of somebody. I was like, that's Harlan Williams. No, it's not. He's way too... No, no, it's not. But I'm going to call him Fat Harlan Williams. He's good. He is. He's he's very good. When we look to see, like, what are the credits he had, not a lot. A lot of stuff like this. A lot of stuff that kind of went under the radar. Um, but there was something about him that I really liked. 20 minutes in, though, as in with, like, a lot of these crazy asylum ward psych ward yep. films there's always a lot of allure to like the the custodians or nurses raping the inmates oh this is a point i wanted to make too i know where you're going continue um okay so i the whole probably first 30 minutes i was so worried because he it wasn't even that he was giving off a rapey vibe yeah it's just that all these films you always see these people taking advantage of the inmates and so that already had my stomach in a knot. And then I immediately think, along with Kristen, you think, of course, all the doctors, the nurses, <coughs> all yeah. of them, they're the bad ones. Right. But I, and I, well, that's another cool twist at the end is, no, they're genuinely yeah. trying to help her. After she beats him with a flashlight. Yeah, everything. Shit, to hold a he's, knife. He's like, I put He your, saves her life. Yep, and he's like, I put your... Uh, your bracelet, bracelet back together. Put it back together for you. Here's your box of stuff. Yeah, that's a cool little detail let's that, break this that down. you kind of miss. Let's, let's break this down for a minute. Because we're both right. The reason why I think a lot of movies do that, uh, we did the ugly on this podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and so they're terrible people to the people in Bad Asylum. Mm -hmm. uh, Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. Oh, yeah, they're they go. Ter yeah, yeah, they're yeah. terrible to Michael Myers in that movie. Uh, Terminator 2. They try to beat the shit out of Linda Hamilton. Yeah, right? It's an easy, quick way to write characters that the audience knows instantly. I'm not supposed to like that person. Right. I think it, right, I, right. I always think that's lazy writing. It is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because you build up this, I don't know what you call it, but kind of uh, dullness to these characters. Because you just assume. Right oh, away. Well, yeah, I, and that's I, exactly right. I didn't notice that in this movie, too, because uh, it was the one that was doing it a lot was the chick from The Flash. Yeah. Because th she was the one that was uh, hitting 
well, I'm going to be out soon. You're going to go on yeah. a date when I get out and blah, blah, blah. And he kept telling her no. Yeah. And I thought, I, I thought that's that that so was weird. Cool, that that's, yeah. a, that's a cool detail. Usually it's just like, oh, let me pull my wiener out. Yeah. It's just so one and done all the time. They're just such one-off characters. Yep. And in a film that's set in a psych ward or in a, a psych ward asylum, whatever, yeah. that's, the, these nurses and caretakers are such an integral part of that story. Yeah, I have a friend who works in that field, not a psych ward, but I mean a similar field, and people don't, I don't want to say they don't do that shit, but it's not, they care. Right. Like, you work in a field like that because you care and you're trying to help people. And right. It's, it's cool to see that kind of represented mm -hmm. in this film. Yeah, I, that's, I, I, I like... really did like that. That, that part at the end where he was like, I fixed your bracelet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like that, that's cool. Fucking tra saved her life from slitting her throat and yeah. shit. Um, that's exactly what I wrote. I said, I like how you assume the nurses are the bad ones, really, though. They're helping. Yeah. That was a... Was for such a small detail that gets glossed over in horror mm -hmm. films like this, I, I was super pumped about that. And I really liked Fat Harlan Williams' uh acting yeah I, I thought he was awesome because he i mean in that first 30 minutes you really don't know and it's i that always makes me my stomach turn like are we gonna see this he needs his own aquaman movie <laughs> <laughs> he can he, be aqualad his breakout role <laughs> aqualad is that a real character mm -hmm. really who's aqualad i have to uh his little dynamic duo i don't know like robin Kind of. His Aqualad. Might be his kid, I don't know. That's gay as shit. I know, I know there's an Aqualad. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, kn I know the name, but I don't know the story at all. <laughs> I, I always... I, <coughs> I'm like everybody else. I thought Aquaman was gay forever. <laughs> but then that new 52, I was like, all right. All fucking super friends. Nah, I don't know. Even Batman was kind of gay in that. He's... Yeah. Exactly, that's my point. <laughs> the one chance did Aquaman have. Right. He's had some cool runs in the Yeah, in but the like that new... Too. I think the new 52 is when I finally watched, uh, read the first Aquaman. Yeah, new 52, I've read the first chunk of that for his. Yeah. That was... That's good stuff. That was a good one. Did, it, did Kevin Smith do a run? Kevin Smith did do a run. He made Aquaman, like, old and grizzled with, like, a Poseidon beard <laughs> Of course he shit. did, yeah. And then he, like, he fucking, like, lost his hand. Oh, and the hook! And the hook! Oh, that was Kevin that Smith? Was, that was Kevin Smith. Oh. Yeah. Cool. Cool shit. You read his Sweet. Green Hornet? No. He did a Green Hornet, too. Oh, really? Yeah. It's not bad. Huh. How long ago was that? Like, pretty recently? I, I'm terrible with years. Huh. 98 oh, that... feels like two years ago to me, Jeff. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, well. That's what happens when you hit 30. <laughs> Trust me, just wait for it. I got, I got a little bit. Yeah. Um, You're what, 21, 22? <laughs> you young. 20, 25. I could be old, grizzled Aquaman. <laughs> you could. You got the hair for 20, it. Yeah, dude. Uh, <laughs> if you don't want to see me let this thing down. In one episode, you're just going to have to, like... Aquaman it. I don't and know. Just, like, let it maybe <laughs> when, maybe when this gets a little bit longer, yeah, I'll have to let this grow for another couple months. Cosplay for <sighs> not not so much this though. Hall I try Halloween cosplay. By October, it might be ready. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm terrible at this, but if I keep rubbing it, it'll grow. Um, That'll be next month's uh, loot box giveaway. <laughs> Jeff's hair. <laughs> What is this shit? Um, have you watched any American Horror Story? Yeah, I have a love-hate relationship with that show. Some of the seasons are good, some of them are just fucking Absolutely. terrible. Absolutely. Uh, so it depends what season two. it was to. Was two Coven? That was three. That one sucked. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't like Coven. What Coven was two? Coven sucked. Asylum. Asylum, okay. I liked Asylum. That's probably been my favorite. Oh, I don't know. Freak Show's up no, there. No, Freak Show. Freak Show's good, but I loved Asylum. I loved the story, and I loved that atmosphere. I oh, like how... I see, I see where you're going. Yeah. yeah. Master of segues. Uh -huh. um, no, uh, it's cool that... Now I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> um, American Horror Story Season 2 Asylum. You get to dive into that setting and that environment more, but that also plays with like the nurses are evil, the everybody's evil there. Yes. 
And uh, I just thought something like this, where it's the other way around, this would be cool, like a little mini series or something, where you get to really dive into each different personality. Mm -hmm. And then you get to see, like, the, um, I don't know what you call it, not the, I mean, it's medicine, but their process, the doctor's process of trying to right, like medicate if, if for each. If it was each... a show, you could pull back from just. Just Amber, right, just and you could go story. into Daniel Pennebaker's one, the little girl who's acting like a little girl with the bunny one. Yeah. You could kind of dive into each one, and you could really go more in depth with. Because I think it would have been cool to see like the doctor and the nurse, nurses, and everybody like work together and like what they're actually doing. I, I don't know. I think it would have been a cool little touch. So something like a mini series would be it's cool, like how Asylum did it. This is why there's so much good horror in like the TV space right now yeah. on Netflix and shit because you can spend the time to do yeah. all of that shit. A lot of world building and yeah. setting everything up. Um, I love that. It's, uh, Isn't it funny how I will bitch about the runtime <laughs> for, god damn, that movie was close to three hours long like Watchmen. Not fucking, but then I can sit down and watch five episodes of a TV show. Yeah. Back to back to back, and it's that's. Okay. It's because you're watching that, and you're just they know how much they want to lay out and what they want to do, yeah. but they know they're on a time limit. And then they yeah. always have that end. Exactly. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. One more episode. Yeah. Oh fuck! It's one in the morning, but one more episode. Um, so, so like, I would definitely recommend like American Horror Story Asylum, um, and then just in general. I mean, <laughs> yeah. in general, yeah. but. Um, it kind of goes along the same line as this, but the Netflix horror film or horror series that I just watched in October, Haunting of Hill House. I haven't seen that. Yet. Oh, I definitely recommend that for sure. That was a great watch. Um, this um, I, it's fucking the new year, but it, when we're in January, I want to go back and watch more horror shit now. This this makes me want to rewatch The Ugly as well. I'm glad I introduced you. Well, You're the only person I know who likes that movie. Fucking now. movie. It's good. It's like Harry Brown. <laughs> Nobody knew what the fuck Harry Brown was. There was supposed was. to be a remake of The Ugly. Oh, yeah. I think you mentioned that. Yeah. It just. We should do it. It's gone. We could. What was his name in it? Simon. Simon. I'll be Simon. <laughs> or you can be Simon. I don't care. We can both be Simon, really. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> You're the ugly. <laughs> I, I, I am. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> You're the <laughs> Oh, okay. Um, something else that I want to mention, I'd, too. I'd rather not make it to the playoffs than lose to the Cowboys. That's fine. I'll get Brian next week. <laughs> if you guys are watching. Um, I'm okay. saying the fucking Cowboys. Another thing that they kind of went over really quickly. Um, I mean, it all ties back at the end, but who the fuck Tammy was in the beginning? We find out it was just another one of her alter egos. Yep. But throughout the whole film, I mean, you get it at the end, which is fine. But throughout the whole film, like, who, who the fuck was Tammy? What did she do? <laughs> and then at the end, you kind of get that book note where you find out. but Because you as an audience member up until that twist where they reveal what's actually going on. Right. Think that there is some kind of plot. And they say a lot of names, too, and you don't they see do. anybody. Yep. So, like, there was Alice running around killing people, but then what happened to Tammy? And then there's Kristen here with... I was like, this is the only movie I remember everybody's fucking name. Why? <laughs> because they kept, yeah, yeah. they kept saying it all the time. And writing it. Who the fuck was Tammy? And I like the little chalkboard, too. And the nurse, she just kind of, eh. The fact that it was set in 66 is kind of cool. Don't you think? Okay, it lets yeah. You, it lets you get away with dumb shit, like yeah. shock therapy. Yeah. Because you're not doing that anymore, probably. <laughs> no. I don't know. They, that's a big part of Asylum, of American Horror Story Asylum. But, um, okay, so, it, I mean, it is set in 66, but did you really feel like it was 66? It felt kind of... The clothing... Uh, the clothing, yeah. the TV set. I don't know. The there was just and white and the right. They they, they they had all the things. They had the right things, but as a setting, I was just like, it just didn't feel like. Yeah. Like '60s. I don't know why. Maybe I'm just being a cynic, but 
There's just something off about it, and I can't figure it out. I don't know why. Maybe I'm just being an asshole. Well, I don't know if this has anything to do with it, but I've heard directors talk about when you do a period film, it's really expensive. Right, yeah. Uh, and so they probably didn't have that big of a budget. Uh, Rob Zombie actually was talking about that with Lords of Salem. Mm. Lords of Salem was supposed to be a period piece set in the, in the early 70s. Didn't have the budget to do it. So it was set in, like, present day. I, that maybe factored into it a little oh, bit. Yeah, when sure. They could only go so far with making it look like a, like a period piece. Right. Um, that would be my cop-out answer. Right. No, it's, it's not a, uh, it's working with what you got, but I don't know why the whole time I was watching. Okay, so here's it, another I, thing. I know what you mean. It didn't really have that did it add feeling. To the, did it add to the film? No, I don't think so. Did it? I mean, really. you could have said it now. It would have been the same thing. Because you could have evil doctors with shock therapy in the basement nowadays if you wanted to. But were they really shocking her? Or was that in her head? Uh, they, <gasps> may, they maybe actually might have because it was of, of the period. And then, okay, so then... Like, that could have... Legitimately... How many times have they done this, then? Like, uh, the five times? Because when the nurse... The nurse actually wipes off Tammy and writes Kristen, right? So is that just like another failed, like, okay, that medicine didn't work? Possibly. So have they done this? They started with, like, Daniel, or the the, the bunny rabbit? Like, yeah, that didn't work? I didn't really think about that. So, like, they're now, just, ro like, the doctors are rotating these people in to accommodate her. So they're, like, really working with her. Because yeah, they've probably they done it, they, like, five or six yep. times. And how the hell did she get out to set the fire? I mean, she, that's, okay, there's one I'm thing. I'm not 100% sure on that either. I don't, I don't have an answer. Okay, there's It's like the beginning of Shutter Island. Why is he on the boat? Uh, well, Mark Ruffalo. But how does he not remember getting on the boat? <sighs> don't be a dick. I, and that's kind of the same thing I have with this one, right? Like, how, right. Is, that, and that's how the, does she get out yeah, to and, burn Well, it? I mean, that's the one thing, though. I... I didn't write it down because I didn't want to make a stink, but the one thing as I was watching it was like, how many fucking ways can one person escape? Yeah. It, <laughs> it's it, like it, every it, night she kept like doing a different way. It does. The middle of the movie does get bogged down mm -hmm. with yeah, that. It's just I, like. I know. Spin the wheel of escapes. <laughs> <laughs> Do I MacGyver my way right. out tonight? And I, I don't know. I wonder, like, if they just locked her down tighter after she did get out to set the fire? Or they kept it... Cl I don't know. Because she really set the fire. Yes. Yeah. I'm assuming she legitimately escaped as one of the personalities. Oh, that's another Went thing, out, too. set the fire. Another personality took over. That's Kristen. when Kristen started. So who got out? Had no recollection of how she got there. Who got out? She's got no memory. I don't know. Oh, and they. Oh, and Iris. Iris was all. I'm get. I get to go. I get to go. That's code for the medicine's working. Yeah. All oh, cool. There's little nuggets all the way through. That could be completely wrong, but. Who, like fuck it. you. Who, el who else are you going to listen to about the ward? The writers are listening to this like, yeah, that's a cool. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's what, that's what, that's I, what I'm up to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. Yeah. Because that's towards, towards, well, yeah. I mean, that's kind of the middle of the film, I guess. Iris gets killed. But she's excited about leaving. That's for sure. Huh. I'm, like, super pumped up at now after, like, talking about this because it... <laughs> There might have been so much. Sorry. Other, <laughs> but, <laughs> oh, uh, poor Bears fans. Yeah, this is a week afterwards, so. <laughs> Big. You should have time to be okay. We're okay. We both lost. Yeah, yeah. I lost to the Cowboys, so. Maybe you make it. At least you lost to Big Dick Nick. I paid Kirk Cousins eighty-four million. <laughs> <laughs> True that. True that. Um, no, I didn't. Uh, well, the, the, right. The Vikings. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so the whole reason, because all of these have, everything in Asylum, there always has to be some form of rape, apparently. 
the whole reason that she has a split personality disorder is oh. like you were saying she she that was, was awful like 11 yeah. maybe oh uh, maybe younger a little bit older that. younger I they said like seven or eight really seven they? or eight she was chained up with her hands above her head in this farmhouse for like two months two weeks i thought they said two weeks two weeks but it could have been longer could have been longer and yeah she was just being sexually abused and tortured every day by who what did we find out who it was just some guy just some terrible person it's ambiguous all you ever see right. is like a silhouette yeah with a big beard michael myers creepy and that's another interesting thing too kind of midway through they're out in like the uh the court uh what do you call it Oh, the old courtyard. courtyard thing. Uh, and uh, there's that the parent, you don't know who they are, but you see the mom and dad standing there yeah. looking out the window. And she, yeah, who are those people? Oh, those are the sad people. They come every so often. Oh, yeah, that's actually her parents. Yeah. Yep. And like, you have, that's another cool thing going back and thinking about it. They come in and check on their daughter all the time, but the way that her. Uh, and as an audience member, you're thinking. Are they... Part of the doctors or something? Yeah, are they the it? ones instructing weird experiments to be happening on the patients? That's right, the world right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, it's just her other personalities telling her that those are the sad ones. Yeah. And you're like, what the fuck? But then you find out that those are her parents. There's a lot of cool little... Uh, this is definitely uh, like a rewatch. It's a two-watch film. For, for sure. sure. Uh, <laughs> I'll, take, I'll take that Coke <laughs> later. Um... And I, I don't know if you've seen um, a film called The Apparition. Apparition? I don't think so. At first, when you were talking about this film, um, I, I've, I looked it up on IMDb and you might have showed me a picture. It looks like the cover of The Apparition a little bit. Hmm. Kind of the uh, random entities and arms reaching out to grab her. Um, I might throw an image up oh, yeah. of that, of like the two posters, because I was confused at first. The apparition? Mm-hmm. I think that's what it's called. Oh, I know the poster. Mm-hmm. The one with the chick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, at first I was yeah, like, I, I can, thought... I can see that. Who's in this? I thought that that was that film. Ashley Green. I have it. I just never watched it yet. Well, the kid from Planet of the Apes. That's what I thought I had... Oh, Tom, that's uh, Draco. Uh, Harry, Harry Potter. Yeah, Draco. Yeah, Draco. Um, I did the dumb thing where I picked the Planet of right. the Apes yeah, 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 over yeah, top yeah, of yeah, Harry yeah. Potter. Because um, I thought I had this film when you mentioned it. Because I, I bought that at uh, Family Video or something for like two bucks. Probably. And so I was like, oh, I have this. And it turns out that I didn't. I thought it was the same thing. So I ended up watching this on like Amazon. <coughs> Anyways, all right, so, um, I mean, that's the ward. I think we pretty much we covered the shit covered, out of this Yeah, I, I actually picked up on a lot that I didn't notice before. It's a movie that helps when you can talk it out loud. It's like when we talked when about the ugly. Yeah. It. yeah. As soon as we talked about the ugly, I was just like, <gasps> oh, my God. I was like uh, Andy Dwyer. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, so let's do some final thoughts and stuff. We'll do okay. some trivia, and we'll talk about it next week. So um, closing up John Carpenter's War 2011, what do you have to say? What, explain yourself. Explain myself? This is why I picked it. Because uh, you can tell it's a John Carpenter film, too, and that's what I think is cool, is there are some really cool shots. There's one early on where there's, like, a uh, when she goes to light the fire, where the book of matches is like really close to the camera and she strikes it and just the way it pulls back and there's some other there's some other shots in the film that are very carpenter where uh, a new director would have that bullshit camera that's going everywhere yeah, all I over the that. place i hate that shit and he does the carpenter like pan across the screen and follow uh the shot where she falls oh yeah i forgot about Bowden that is very halloween where uh Ooh, yeah yeah where she lands she falls, falls out, out of the, the window. window and lands on the ground and then the camera goes out and you see her and she's positioned i Always swear really awkward really close to how michael myers was at the end of the first halloween film and i thought that that was really cool uh, i was gonna say buzz lightyear 
Okay. <laughs> Toy St- I, oh my God, did Toy Story take that? Is that an homage? Because when Buzz is after, I am Mrs. Nisbet. <laughs> and then he, he, Woody talks him up and he tries to fly and he goes up to the top of the stairs. So he's going to fly out the window. Oh, yeah. And he jumps and he just lands, but he lands in that really weird position. Maybe. Okay. Or maybe you just talked yourself into it. Yeah, I might have just made it you up. But no, I'm pretty uh, sure. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> um, no, I thought that that was cool. I, th- I think that you can tell that he still ha- he's still a good director. And I'm going to assume maybe he's just choosing not to work at this point in his career. But I wish he would do... Like one last huge... Big film to end on because this is cool. I like this. This is kind of Escape different. from Chicago. Detroit. Escape from Detroit. <laughs> Detroit, right? Yeah, yeah, Seriously. yeah. For sure. Uh, it's... Don't need to dress the set or anything. <laughs> no shit. Just go to Detroit. Uh, <laughs> go land on Ford Motors. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you got to turn it manually. <laughs> but you got to admit, even liking the film, it's kind of an odd note. This is. The last movie so far that he's directed. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, just had something I was gonna say, but I got completely forgot. Oh, okay. So if it wasn't uh, directed by John Carpenter, that's the thing, though, because this, I feel like with with him directing, it completely changes. It. I think if this was left to like some of the other films that were related to it on IMDb. Some of those, like, B or C, it would be, it would, it wouldn't have the same essence to it, you know. It brings a certain class to the movie, and you almost wonder if, because he's a writer, oh, you would have to have some kind of credit, or maybe you can do that uncredited. I don't know how, I don't know how it works, but could he gloss over a script and be like, yeah, we're not going to do this rape scene? Well, even, well, even when he's directing it, just be like, we're not going to do that. Yeah. Next scene. Yeah, you don't. I mean, I'm I'm going to attribute some of that to him. Because I was thinking about it, and like, if this was, you know, just some B asylum films, it would probably not be that good. We'd probably watch it and be like, you know, that twist was kind of good. Yeah. But that's it. When you watch it now, you see all these little things and all like you're talking about some of the camera movements that Mm -hmm. are just really subtle. But really, that very John Carpenter that makes the film. If it if it was oh, and running down the hall, it'd be dumb, shaky yeah, cam and I shit. See that shit. Yeah, I don't. So I'm, I just I, what I'm trying to spit at is if it wasn't John Carpenter, I don't think this would be anywhere near as decent as a film as it is. We wouldn't be talking about it. Chances, chances yeah. are we wouldn't. Right, be down there on the list of IMDb with all those other ones. We should watch some other film that these guys. I'm did, curious. Just to see. Yeah, Dark Feed. I don't know. Maybe it's good. Who knows? I don't know. We're gonna watch I mean, we watched... Uh, what was the dumbass one that we, we did? We watched Daybreakers, so we ended up watching Undead. Yeah. Which was like a cool, oh. low-budget meh. You liked it more than I did. Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah. I, I had a lot of fun with it. Um, yeah, I would I would definitely say check it out if you haven't already. Obviously, I think you would if you're watching this. but And then watch it again. And uh, just take notes if you have to. Talk about it with some friends. Listen to us again. Because there's a lot of subtle stuff that you don't pick up on. And even if, like, half the shit, we, you know, we made up, like, with Iris. That's cool. It's cool. It's cool to think about. You can put your own little spin on it. So, um, give it a watch. Let's get into some trivia. I got a little bit of trivia. There's not a whole lot on it. Um, in audio commentary, Jared Harris asks Carpenter why he didn't compose the music for the film. I that was a question I really wanted to know because I felt that was a missed opportunity. John Carpenter says, "Quote, quite frankly, I'm too old." Whoa. He just didn't he's feel complete, like it. He's or... completely changed his tone since <laughs> yeah. then. I think he's got three albums that are out. That's crazy. That he's done since 2011. Of, yeah. Wow. And at least two music videos. But I mean, maybe he just didn't have time or feel maybe like doing it for this film. Maybe or... at the time, maybe directing was and composing lot. was too much for him. For sure. And then I think he's found his passion and 
just doing, doing film, just uh, doing scores score. now. Did he do the Halloween, the, the last yeah. year's Halloween movie? Did he do the film score for that? Last year's Halloween movie. Yeah, the one that just came out. Oh, the newest, yeah, the yeah, newest yeah, yeah, Halloween. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I for, I, I mean, still haven't seen that. I mean, either I think I just seen it. It's out on digital. I think I'm gonna buy it. Hmm. I yeah, it. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I'll look I, at, I forgot about that. You do the rest of your trivia. I'm gonna okay. Look it up really quick. Yeah, I, I completely forgot about the fucking the Halloween movie. Yeah, like, bringing back yeah. Uh, uh, Jamie, Lee Jamie Lee Curtis to kind of close it out. Wow. Okay. Um, this is John Carpenter's first full feature film since Ghosts of Mars. Uh, it was 2001. 2001, I wrote it down. Oh, cool. Uh, Sandy King. Uh, I like Ghost of Mars. I'd have to watch it again. It's been a while. I always get that in the, uh, what's the um, kind of tongue-in-cheek one with the aliens come down that are like all kind of shoddy CGI? Oh, uh, Mars we're here Attacks? To, we're, uh, Mars That's Attacks. Tim Burton. Right. I yes. always, I always yep. get those. Ghosts of Mars and Mars Attacks. And then there's another one. What the hell is the name of it? You're right, because there was all these dumb Mars movies exactly. right around 2000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, but there's a whole bunch of them. Yeah. Ghost of Mars is Ice Cube and Leif Schreiber, maybe. What's Wolverine? that? Wolverine. Uh, he did do the score. Sabretooth. Sabretooth. Oh, did I say Wolverine? Sorry. Uh, yeah, he did the score for Halloween. For the, for the, 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 the new one, yep. Okay. What year is it? 18? 18. Last year, yep. <laughs> Last year. Two weeks <laughs> ago. Well. Um... Sandy King, uh, John Carpenter's wife, described this as his chick flick. <laughs> oh, ice Cube. Ice Cube. Oh, Jason is that, Statham. Is that Pam Greer? Yeah. Ice Cube, Pam Greer, Jason Statham, uh, Clea Duvall. Yeah, what's she from? Faculty and... Uh, I have the internet right Yeah. Faculty, Argo. Um, what's Yeah. She's cool. Who else is in there? Not Lee Schreiber. Nope, you must be thinking of the other one. That's so weird. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of those about that time. Huh. What's the what's the poster like on that one? Just yeah, like, that's not the even that's not the one I'm thinking of. Huh. The D V D for it's completely different than that poster. It's like just red with Yeah. I'm like I'm them. seeing people in like Astronaut helmets and stuff with a red background yeah, and Lee Schreiber what, and I know what you're fucking just type in like Lee Schreiber, um, and then this film had a ten million dollar budget, which is very low, especially for John Carpenter, ten million bucks. It only made back about one point one million, so Ouch. this lost quite a bit of money. But I wonder how if it's picked up with uh, like Blu-ray sales and everything. I couldn't tell you. I looked really quick. It was only like, if you want this, it's 12 bucks. <coughs> Excuse me. It's like 12 bucks on Amazon right now. See, that's one of the ones that I might have gotten. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just reaching, grasping for straws right now. Uh, type in, uh, uh, I think it's, what is it? L-I-E-V. Not L-I-E-V. This is so thrilling. Lee Schreiber. This is so thrilling for everyone um, at home. Mars movie. I swear it's him. I could be completely wrong, though. Well. Uh, somebody else was looking. That. What the hell is that? The last day on Mars. This is, like, completely different. This is new, isn't it? I don't know. <laughs> oh, 2000. 2013. 13. Oh, that was a little off. I, I remember him in like the that with that poster. There's another one. It doesn't matter. Just type in like Mars movie. There you go. John, John Carter, Carter Mars. Mars. Yeah, that's literally Red later. Planet. Red Planet. What's Red Planet? Ah, uh, Red Planet is the one with Batman, Val Kilmer. I swear I said that. I swear to God, I said Red Mission Planet. Mission to Mars. There's another one. I swear to God, I said Red Planet. Now we're now we're in all this shit. Yeah. That'd be interesting. 
Just combine all of those. Ghosts of Mars, Mission to Mars, Red Planet. And Attack of... Attack of the... Mars Attack. Mars Attack. <laughs> Mars Attack. Well, that was 96. That was a little... A little before. Still, though. Whoosh. All of that. How does that happen? How do all of these people end up with the same... Why are we talking about Mars? Because John Carpenter. Oh, right. John Car- I was like, how the hell did we Ghosts get here again? Mars? Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Fucking vampire movie? Um, the, uh, the Ward... So this was uh, episode 61. So episode 62, we've already got planned out. Very excited about it. It's been a while. You can tell how excited I'm about it. Yeah. Very stoked. <sighs> <laughs> Number 62 is going to be Jet Li, Bob Hoskins, Morgan Freeman, Unleashed, Danny the Dog. Uh, excited. It's super... been a while since we've done a Jet Li film. Yes. And it's it's been a little bit since I've watched <laughs> this. Um I'm super excited. Probably since about '96. <laughs> <laughs> I have. Or 2013. I've got I've got a couple cool stories about Unleashed. Um, I've got a lot to talk about with Unleashed. So I next week wait. will be super fun. Um, and we just talked about Bob Hoskins, and yeah. uh, he's great in that film. Would have been a, a great Penguin in a Batman film, but who am I? I'm not a casting director. Um, that's just my little dream. So. Uh, you got anything else to add before we get out of here? You done? No, I think we've talked enough. Good deal. Um, Unleashed will be fun. Unleashed will be super fun. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for listening. Um, from the Pantheon Network Studio, this has been Shut Up, I Like This, and we'll see you next week. I'm out.